My name's Jessica Cundy and I work for a large national children's charity as a research and policy officer and my work involves writing briefings and reports on a range of issues related to vulnerable children, young people and families. I'm Pete Simcock, I'm Senior Lecturer in the Social Work Department at Staffordshire University. I have essentially two key roles, undertaking some of my own research, but predominantly teaching students on undergraduate social work degree programmes and post-qualifying social work courses. I'm Sharon Gale and a social worker. I work for the local authority in a review team and that involves working with adults, adults with learning disabilities, adults with physical disabilities and older people. The British Library's Social Welfare Portal is a really useful one-stop shop for an organisation like mine. Um, it saves a lot of time in gathering relevant briefings, reports, um, research and other literature. As a lecturer it's important both for me and for my students that we have access to a range of resources that we can use. As a social worker I need access to legislation, up-to-date research and policy and what I need to do is have access to the information quite quickly it's also a resource that I can recommend to my students and I'm assured that the information they're getting is credible and reliable because it's through the British Library. The welfare portal is very easy to use. I can do a variety of searches. I can either do a generic search or I can do a more specific advanced search. At the moment, one of my cases involves working within the Mental Capacity Act legislation. So I can look at that as a generic subject or I can be a bit more specific on the advanced search and I can look up certain subject areas such as the Court of Protection. On a particular subject area, you can access a range of briefings and reports um, and research literature that you can easily download for free. We can access um, many uh, deposited PDFs through the portal rather than having to search elsewhere. You can select a heading under subject areas, for example children and young people with disabilities, and that will take you straight to a page where all of the relevant um, reports are in one place, and you can download and read them for free, um, which is a, a really great resource for us. I can search through a range of ways, through author, subject, service user group, or area of work. And I can put in either an advanced search or a generic search and I can go straight to the information that I need. I find the monthly newsletters really useful for highlighting new pieces of research and briefings that have um, been added to the portal on a subject that I'm interested in. So for sending abstracts on, um, for example, aspects of the Welfare Reform Bill. Particularly at this time of a time of great reform, there's a, a significant amount of change which can be difficult to keep up with. The Welfare Reform Digest captures some of those changes and is, as well as the academic journals, I have access to parliamentary papers, changes in legislation, which I can use to enhance my teaching and again, referring the portal to the students to enable them to keep up with the latest changes in adult social care. I would recommend the welfare portal to other social workers and the reason for that is because I find it very easy to use and very quick to use and it saves time. For example, I have service users very often or their carers or their family. When I'm having conversations with them over the phone, they ask me for some information which is specific to the person they're looking after or it could be about legislation so it's useful to have a site that is easy to and and accessible to get the information. It's a user-friendly, reliable source of a range of information, both historical and contemporary, in all aspects of social welfare and social work.